Oh, you mean like in the campaign? Yeah. Yes. If I remember correctly, you're right. Well, anyway, uh, this is game number two. Van Zarg versus Fade. This is a non-fun day match, so we're going back to normal. And in the top left of the map here, we have our purple player, Anuzark. And spawning down in the bottom corner of the map, currently down one game in this map, wearing the yellow purple or yellow Protoss pieces, it is Day Nine, Day Nine Ladder Clan, Fade. Who's bragging that he's never lost to an early pool, which I kind of don't believe. I'm sure he has. Or he's playing mind games. <laughs> he's trying to get him to do it. Is he trying to get him to do the ten pool? Doesn't look like Anizark is going to do it, though. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like there's a tin pool coming out. Especially since. Oh. Oh, he's boy, pretty there. much set. He's like, he just basically, his reaction was great. He's just like, huh? Do normal thing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what you want in this situation. Definitely, definitely. And it looks like it's going to be a gateway first opening from our Protoss player. I really like that a lot on this map. Now it's a, it seems really hard to uh, wall this map or whenever you have a uh, forge first. Usually you end up with uh, several pylons on your wall. And that usually leaves you quite vulnerable to Bane Bus. Mm. It is true. And unfortunately... It's a, it's, a, it's a reality that a lot of Protoss players have to deal with. And now, Fade, on the other hand, I'm, I'm not sure we're ever going to see him get a second base. So it may not really come into play much. At least, given the way he plays in the past, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> One base, best base. <laughs> Three minutes. Here's the... That's a drone going down for a base. Yep. Nope. Oh, fake out. <laughs> Looks like he's going to scout and then oh. go for a base. <laughs> ah, smart move. I do like that he Un went pool first versus the Protoss, even though it was a uh, a gateway expand. There's just no way to know that when the Protoss scouts you. No. I it's mean, and and sorry. last time he played Fade, Fade did actually cannon rush him, so he's got to have that in the back of his mind. <laughs> oh, yes. It's amazing how like the past experiences... Weigh so heavily, like on what you on your future choices. Like if you played a, per, a person before, you're you're always expecting him to do the exact same strategy, even though they have probably several different strategies they have in their bank. He's currently I'm listing out a Twilight Council. Ah, blink play. Okay, Ooh. most likely. You can try to go from DTs, but that would be a little bit too easily scouted unless he has a proxy pile on somewhere. And this stalker here is just going to make sure that no scouting goes on. But this overlord see that, sees that there's no natural taken, so it looks like he's just going to stay on two bases. He's got the biggest and most important piece of information at this point, for sure, with regards to that. And uh looks like we're having problems with Anazarg. We'll just give him a little right here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Alright. No. It happens, it happens. Whatever he's doing, we'll let him take care of it. I'm sure he'll be back shortly. Um So, how are things going for you? Um, good, like for the most part. A little bit tired and running out of energy right now, but you know, I, it's pretty good. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Oh, looks like Anna's arc's right. restarting. We'll okay. Back. One of the things I like to see off of one base is actually charge rather than blink versus Zerg. I feel like it's so much stronger and definitely gives you an edge versus uh, Roach play. And if you're staying on one base, usually that'll be the preferred choice of counter from the Zerg. 
rather than say hydras where you'd have to really invest in that so much it looks like he gets a uh, proxy pylon down this is really going to help him a lot as he goes to try to assault this natural and uh, do some damage as he really needs to in this uh, one base play so blink has about two minutes left on it still be a little bit far out there the tackle most likely starts shortly before blink though he can wait. It actually loses quite a bit of power if he does. Also, each chrono boost that you see go down, it's basically like 10 seconds chopped off with the timer, more or less. Which really uh, makes, a, makes a difference, let me tell you, from a Zerg point of view. <laughs> so he can basically, if he puts all the chrono boost remaining into it, it'll come out at about 40 seconds slow, quicker than what I said. So that'll be, uh, instead of two minutes probably about a minute and 20 seconds. So it's still basically where it's still a little bit of ways out in any case. And that's even if he puts all the Chrono Boost into it, which my guess is he'll get about half of it since he's already starting the aggression at the front. Maybe less than that. And it looks like it's going to be four gate blink. This should be very interesting. I don't think I've ever had the pleasure of seeing this like versus a Zerg before, but it looks like it definitely has potential right now. Especially since all he's going to be able to defend with is Lings. And it looks like he's going to lose this third hatchery as he chose not to cancel it. It's pretty much just a matter of... Uh, just yeah, letting that, just letting that go so he can buy time is really the best method here. Once these spine crawlers get up, this with these three queens here, this position is actually quite difficult to engage into. But uh, here we go. Looks like he's going to try and force the issue right now. Out come the Lings. Lings get into the engagement first. There's a spore crawler there. So uh, I guess that was just something he threw down maybe Ooh, on accident. The uh, mothership core goes down. That's going to help out a lot here. That actually blunts the effectiveness of the push quite, quite a bit. Does get rid of the probe, so no more closer pylons. You really should pull these lings back, though. I don't think it wants to engage out here. And 12 lings are being uh, made right now. This is really good. I'm not sure it's going to be enough, though, because uh, stalkers are so good versus slow lings, especially with blink, where you can just move them back as they uh, run out of uh, shields. And, uh, yeah, I, the drones being pulled is a very, very bad sign at this point. So, oof. Oof. Roach Warren coming down, but unfortunately, no more lings. And the drones are waiting to attack. He does have the money for it, though. So, I, yeah, it was yeah. just a just kind of like fight. getting overwhelmed, probably. Yeah. This is definitely a very scary push. <laughs> I think pretty much it looks we like can say is... that the the push has won if it takes out the natural. If that, if he can push just well enough to make that happen, then uh, then it's this is definitely a guaranteed victory. But definitely, definitely. it's yeah, he should have it. Survive yeah. long enough to get the roaches out. Um, Fade is actually not really warping. There we go. He's getting his warpings in, and yeah, he's gotten the base. He's done all the damage he needs to. If he grabs a natural behind this, he can actually just... doesn't even really need to do anything other than just pretend, prevent the natural from coming back up for a while. I think he... Act, since he uh, doesn't have a queen right now, I think he actually has the ability to just push up into the main and just end this. Roach wandering out to the front. Meeting an untimely demise. And yeah, there's just way too much up here. Mm, that's just too much Protoss army. And it looks like we're going to be going to a third game this time. Pretty much. Uh, focus down the Roche Warren next. Basically just clean up all the tech tree. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 